Okay, welcome back everyone. This is uh, Silicon Angles The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host, Stu Miniman, filling in for Dave Vellante. We are live in San Francisco for the Red Hat Summit, and this is where all the action is happening around open source, cloud, the modern era of infrastructure, software development, DevOps, the whole world's changing, a whole new way. We're at an inflection point and we're covering it. Our next guest is a hot startup founder and CTO, Solomon Hikes from Docker, formerly Dot Cloud. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So you guys are the buzz of the show. Obviously you got your PR machine's in full throttle because we know they hit me up on email all the time, but you got senior leadership over there. Uh, you guys have been growing. Um, obviously cloud's not new to you guys. Um, so give us a quick update on Docker. What's happening and what the quick news, we'll get that out of the way and we'll jump into a conversation. Right, so yeah, the, the news today is that um, Docker and Red Hat are jointly announcing even more collaboration. We, we had already uh, announced that um, Docker would be supported as part of the new uh, RHEL version, and now we're, we're announcing that uh, Red Hat is, invest is committing to supporting Docker in the future. They've announced a Jumpstart program to train uh, some of their customers to deploying Docker. Um, so there's a, there's a whole string of announcements. Uh, OpenShift, the OpenShift project has announced that they're um, standardizing on top of Docker even more, et cetera. So All right, let's talk about Docker for a second. Go back yeah. and give us a little history lesson. What you, how many employees you guys have? How much funding? You had a name change? Talk about the, the quick history for the folks who might not know you guys. Sure, so it's 30 of us today, uh, and Docker used to be called .cloud. So we changed names about six months ago uh, from .cloud. Uh, and so we, we, as part of the, the, the name change, we raised $15 million in Series B. Uh, and before that, as .cloud, we had raised uh, $10 million in Series A in 2011. Why the name change? Just guys felt like, hey, .cloud was played, you wanted to have a fresher brand. So, you no, felt it, was, it might be fashionable, it might be getting it, style, what's just? It, it kind of, uh, just, it was, it, we just had to. So what happened is, you know, .cloud is a platform as a service. It, it, it hosts and runs people's applications online, keeps them available, et cetera. Um, and out of that product, um, you know, as part of that product, we developed uh, a lot of underlying technology, uh, including uh, container deployment and automation technology. Right? And we open sourced that and it became so popular, it became a thing even bigger than Docker had ever been. And so change in the company was just a, us admitting, okay, Docker is the biggest thing that we... So we talk about containers all the time. We always talk about what comes first, the container or the data? And everyone's always argues about containers. This is a really great topic. And, and first of all, containers are very important. So I want to drill down on that with you. So, sure. so you know, I tweeted yesterday, do, do you talk about the container first or data first? Or software first, all, all three. So let, let's, let's drill into it. Why are containers so hot right now? And do people worry too much about the container and not about the architecture? How do you balance that? Because you do have to balance it. Yeah, so I think it starts with the application. There's a lot of applications being built today, new kinds of applications, uh, a lot more of them. So I think it does start with the software and what you want the software to do, right? You want applications that do new things, incredible things, and for that to be possible, you need a new kind of architecture. And so, you know, I like to think of the container as the Lego brick that makes that architecture possible. You know, it, it's, it's the starting point, it's the fundamental unit. Talk about the container a little bit more in detail. What is the container, what are you guys talking about? When you say container, define that real quick. So uh, a container is a unit um, of deployment, right? It, it's the format in which you package your application, all the files, all the executables, libraries, all the dependencies in one thing that you can move to any server and deploy in a repeatable way. So it's similar to how you would uh, run an iOS app on, a, on an iPhone, for example. So uh, Red Hat launched a certification program. You guys, are you shipping it on Fedora and Linux? Give the details on what's happening with the, your partnership. So uh, yeah, Docker is now distributed on both uh, RHEL, Fedora, uh, and CentOS, now part of the Red Hat ecosystem. Um, and you know, Docker, our goal is for Docker to be available and easy to use on all major operating systems, and obviously Red Hat is right there on top of the list. So Solomon, you know, the best description I've heard of what containers do is that really it separates kind of the application management from the infrastructure management 
Um, it reminds me a lot of what platform as a service can do also because I should be able to be agnostic to my infrastructure. Uh, can you help reconcile for us as to where containers fit with kind of Red Hat's ecosystem? So, you know, you only work on Linux today, um, you know, you work across their various Linux distributions, but, you know, where does it fit with things like OpenShift and OpenStack? Right. So, uh, well, Docker came out of platform as a service, right? Doc Cloud itself is a platform as a service. Um, and so it's very connected. I, you know, you could say platform as a service is a specific way to use containers. Uh, by definition, when you're doing a PaaS, you're offering a specialized value-add solution to a, for certain kinds of applications, right? Um, and we, you know, we, we were in the business of doing that with .cloud. Uh, what we realized is when you want to build a platform that's really universal, that everyone can build on top of, you need to break it down into a smaller fundamental unit because there is no single cookie cutter path that everyone can use, right? There's a lot of customization going on. And so, um, you know, if you think of OpenShift and other paths platforms out there as, you know, really awesome toys that you can just start playing with, the pirate ship, the spaceship, you know, we're coming in and saying, hey, maybe if you build this out of Lego, you're, you're going to be more flexible down the road. Okay. So that's, that's the relationship. Great, so you know, you've also built you know, quite a good community around your solution. Can you talk about kind of the size of your team and you know, not just inside the people doing all the coding. You know, my understanding is other than your CEO and Turtle, everybody inside uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the company uh, you know, does coding, but uh, you know, you've built a lot of external people to the company that are helping to build yeah. the solution. And, and I think it would be more accurate to say the community built us. Yeah. Uh, you know, Docker was a side project, and then people showed up and said, we're going to make this a thing, right? And you guys can tag along if you want. And we're like, okay, well, we'll tag along. And so, you know, the community just made that project. And so, I mean, I'm the lead maintainer of Docker, uh, but when I wear that hat of lead maintainer, it doesn't matter where I work. Um, Docker, the company, provides an infrastructure to support that project, but the project today has core maintainers and all sorts of contributors that are not employees of Docker, the company. Um, and that's, that's, you know, it reminds me of Linux, kind of a smaller version of Linux, and it's, it's, really, it's a really cool way to, to work, to do software. Yes, yeah, so is Red Hat contributing at all to that, or are yeah. there any other vendors? Can you talk a little bit about the ecosystem and who's involved? Yeah, so there's, I mean, there are, there are all sorts of participants. Uh, many, many Red Hat employees, you know, Red Hat pays for some of their employees to directly contribute to Docker, and that's been a very constructive participation. Um, you know, other companies have participated either directly or indirectly. A lot of individuals, right? Uh, if you go through the list, you'll you'll see people who work at, you know, Google, IBM, Intel, you know, places like that, and you know, Canonical. I, I, now I worry about forgetting names, but there's it's a big, federated engineering effort. So I'm gonna talk about the uh, competition. Obviously, um, you guys are getting a lot of buzz. Containers do make a lot of sense. It's a great way to have application delivery. You guys talked about that yesterday with Red Hat. Um, you know, application delivery is really a top priority. Getting things out fast, DevOps culture, you know, <laughs> pushing code. Um, but uh, people talk about you guys in context of Vagrant. Uh, mm. what do you, how do you guys uh, compare and contrast? Some say it's actually complementary. One's lightweight, one's a little bit heavier. Can you compare and contrast the two approaches? Yeah, I think um, I think Docker gets compared to a lot of tools out there in the DevOps world. Right, we get compared to Vagrant. We get compared even more to things like Puppet and Chef and you know configuration management. And I think the answer is the same for all of those. You don't, um, it's, it's not, you know, Docker is not a direct replacement for any of those. You can use them together. Um, the, the main thing is Docker just kind of does its own thing. It's a container engine, that's the category. And Vagrant is not a container engine. Puppet and Chef are not a container engine. Yeah. So I think if you use Vagrant specifically, since you asked about Vagrant, uh, if you use Vagrant to manage virtual machines, then they are complementary. And the way a lot of people use them together is they, they use Vagrant as a utility to deploy a virtual box or VMware machine uh, as part of their infrastructure. And so on their laptop, it will be Vagrant. On their uh, in-house cluster, it will be OpenStack. It might be EC2 and, you know, in the cloud. And then on top of that, there's a unified layer to abstract it away, and that's docked. Wouldn't it be easy just to start bickering about who's got what stuff better than who when everything was all the same, when apples were compared to apples and oranges were compared to oranges, but I mean, you essentially have a new category. Um, so two questions, one, how did you overcome that? It's like you're a new animal in the marketplace, you're different, but people can compare and contrast you. So one, talk about your personal experience with how you articulate that, and then two, 
let's talk about OpenStack. What does OpenStack need to do to evolve when you have kind of a lot of competing interests, but not a direct one-to-one -one match? It's, there are some overlaps, but there's also synergies. Talk about the dynamic. One, you guys as a kind of a new category buster, and also uh, OpenStack where there's a lot of competition going on where it's not necessarily a direct one-to-one. -one. Yeah, I think, I think competition is always good. The, what's really important though is the value of open source is in standardizing things and federating effort. So the big thing to watch out for at any given time is do you want to do something new or do you want to join an existing effort? And if you're joining an existing effort, are you doing it constructively uh, or are you forking and creating kind of an, uh, a competing implementation? Right? And I think the problem that the OpenStack community is dealing with is it's really big. There's a lot of interest in it. Um, but it's hard to agree on what on the single definition of what OpenStack is, right? So I think the test is for it to be one thing and to have one name, every deployment of it, every implementation of it should be interoperable, should be standardized. And that's something we're very careful about. So Solomon, back to Docker. You guys are not yet fully GA. I believe the, the last version of your product is 0 0.10. Yeah. So it sounds like we're close. Um, can, can you talk about just customer use cases and uh, you know where you are with kind of customer deployments today? Yeah, so it, it is version 0.10 and we, we release one new version every month. Uh, and we've, we've said that we, it's not yet recommended to use it in production, but we plan on making that, you know, of changing that very quickly. Um, the current plan is to make the next release the first release candidate for 1.0. Um, meanwhile, a lot of people are just ignoring our advice and rolling it out in production, right? So it's production is you know it's a it's a it's a gray area. It depends what you're doing, how how comfortable you are, you know, getting your hands dirty with the technology. So we have people today rolling out Docker on sometimes thousands of servers, running real payloads, and they're we're telling them, hey, you know, it's not off the shelf, and they say that's fine. We're early adopters. So. Yeah. Uh, any any data points on how many people are doing it in kind of private environments versus public environments, or you know, where seems is there um, any sweet spot for it, or is it kind I of think, everywhere? I think it would be my my in, instinctive response would be it's half and half. Uh, and, and the sweet spot is when when you expect things to not be homogenous. Okay. And that's the big selling point. If, yep. if you expect your, your application stack to not be homogenous, or your infrastructure not to be homogenous, then it makes a lot of sense to, to, to buy into Docker at, on day one and make that the only constant, because it's very small. Yeah, I, I don't know too many environments that are homogenous. I mean, that, that's right. always, especially in the enterprise, yeah. that, that's always the problem, is it's yep. you know always heterogeneous, and that's why it's so tough. Yep. So about open source, I was back, I was talking about a thread there, about you we were just on, was standardization and federation versus quirking and going your own. So let you mention OpenStack. So, you know, is OpenStack standard? Are we there yet? How do you feel about that? Because, you know, there was a moment of euphoric hope with OpenStack, then this lull of a lot of people jockeying, but we see it swinging back to almost like, it feels like it's going to break through, but there's still some FUD hanging over it. We've got OpenStack Summit coming up. We'll have theCUBE there live in Atlanta uh, this year, so we're obviously going to drill down. So you know, it feels good. Last year at OpenStack Summit, a lot of deployments, a lot of people voting with their code. Yeah. Um, but there's still a lot of jockeying at the pass layer. <laughs> so um, at the end of the day, it's about software development and getting the apps out there and for yeah. the enterprise to feel comfortable looking under the hood. So I mentioned Lego block design. This is kind of like, this is a good sign for that model. So how do you feel about OpenStack? What's your, what do you think is the work areas that you need to you know, get snapping quicker and move faster or they're pretty solid on the standardization? So, I mean, first, I'm not an OpenStack expert. So, you know, <laughs> I can speak to my relationship with OpenStack, how we integrate with it. Um, OpenStack has been an important um, integration point for Docker because a lot of people who deploy Docker as their abstraction layer for applications do, do that on an infrastructure that is partly OpenStack, right? So deploying Docker-based applications on OpenStack infrastructure needs to be something that works really well. So from our point of view, OpenStack is about infrastructure, right? It's about um, compute, storage, Managing networking. that a single plane of glass right. kind of thing. So, right. Uh, and you know, it's about, hey, I have machines over there, they're managed by OpenStack, I have machines here, they're on EC2, here on Google, here, that's my laptop. Get Docker work on all of that as a whole. The, the, um, the higher level stuff of OpenStack, it's not exposed to us, we don't use it. Uh, and the people well, developer, who, the developers on the DevOps side, so let's, let's ask a different question. So for the DevOps guys out there who are kicking the tires and moving to OpenStack, 
because the enterprises have demand. I mean, anyone who puts OpenStack on their LinkedIn profile gets like five job offers like instantly. Yeah. It's hot to be an OpenStack engineer right now. Yep. So from a developer standpoint, this distribution, there's, there's, a, there's a road, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. So people are making the investment. So what do you guys talk to those guys about? What do you say, hey, Docker can provide for you X? What is it? Um, so, I mean, the, the I, I think it boils down to what the identity of OpenStack is. The, People who today deploy OpenStack and use it are people who are deploying and using infrastructure. Right? That's, that's what OpenStack is used for today in the field. And so people who come to us and they say, we roll out OpenStack, they have a very clear idea of how they want to combine the two. Uh, and so they, they tell us, I have OpenStack infrastructure, make it work with Docker for application deployment, and we help them do that. So really deploying applications at the end of the day is the number one thing. Yeah, it's deploying applications in a way, uh, in such a way that they they are not tied and locked into any kind of infrastructure. So they're portable. So anti-lock-in. Anti-lock-in. Anti yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's not a good marketing slogan, but. I don't know. Um, uh, um, so share the folks out there that are watching. You're in the trenches, you're a tech geek, you're a tech athlete. What is the big deal about this cloud stuff right now? Why is there so much action going on? Why is the developer community, why is there a collision between open source, uh, enterprise, commercial use, and these new paradigms? Why is it a modern era? Explain to the folks in your own words, why is it so important here at the Red Hat Summit? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's a huge trend, right? And, and there are the applications that are being built today are being built for a platform that no one can point to, right? People can point to the iPhone or to Android and say, I'm building an app for that. But the teams and companies that are building, like you know, Gmail, Uber, whatever online service we're using, they can't point to a platform and say, "That's what I'm developing on. That's my platform. That's my computer." Right? It's just it's out there. It's it's cobbled together by all these different tools. It's not standardized. It's almost like we're at the same phase for the cloud, right? That uh, personal computer programmers were at in the '70s, right? Everyone's like has their own. They have a drawer with with their custom Awesome, their, you know, their custom compiler, their custom memory manager, everything. Uh, custom bootloader, and so the trend is that that stack is being built and everyone's in a frenzy to participate in building it for those of us who are engineers first and to make sure, you know, to be, to reap the rewards of it if you're in business. What would you, what's the Docker culture out there? You know, the DNA of the company. You guys still are a young company. Um, get some funding, get some good funding behind you. You're in a hot area, application delivery's hot. What's the culture of Docker? Um, we like to build things, and we're you, typically we're the kinds of engineers who get obsessed about the tools. And so all of us typically used to work in an environment where, you know, to, to, to build good software, you need to invest some of the engineering time in the tools, right? And and but some some people are a little unbalanced, and they they get obsessed about the tool more than the initial project. And that's the kind of people we are. We just want the tool to be awesome, so that if you're building whatever it is you're building you have tools that just make you 10 times more productive, right? Just 10 times more innovative. Yeah, so wondering if you could, you know, give advice to people, you know, in the Valley, there's so many startups up here, you know, you're a young starter, you know, working with, you know, building a community, getting everybody involved, you know, what have you learned over the last year since you kind of came out of stealth and, uh, you know, you, you've been, it's, it's now Docker, you've got a big announcement here at Red Hat Summit, you've got DockerCon, uh, you know, yeah. coming up next month, you know, what, what advice would you give to people out there that are, you know, thinking about, you know, hopping on, you know, the open source wave and, you know, starting a software company? Yes. Yeah, I, I guess, I mean, the, the the first thing that comes to mind is to kind of stick to building what you like to build. Um, you know, Docker has been presented as a pivot, but actually it's the closest thing to the initial project we started on in 2008. <laughs> I hate that word pivot, by the way. It's such a bad word. You know, we, we, we quit our job in 2008 to start an open source project that used containers to automate the deployment of application, you know, abstracting the infrastructure away. That's what we did. No one cared at the time, so we just kind of survived long enough to give it a second try. So it's been six years, and it wasn't always easy, but we stuck to it because what else were we going to do? It's, it was the most fun thing to build that we can think of. So I think... Who are your it, backers? Who was the VCs behind you guys? Um, so we, Y Combinator backed us uh, in 2010, yeah. and then we raised money from uh, Trinity Ventures and Benchmark Capital. And then Greylock uh, recently, you know, Jerry our, Chen. Yeah, Jerry this Chen Jerry Chen's first investment. Uh, yeah. Apparently, so, I think know, so. I think, I think so. We, <laughs> Jerry, friends also, Jerry Chen's also a friend of theCUBE. So Greylock's some good, you got some good partners behind yeah, you. Yeah, they're great. And total funding you raised now? 
Uh, twenty six million, I guess. Okay, so you got some you got some money in the bank. We do. It's hard to go out of business when you have money in the bank, as I always say. Yeah. So, uh, congratulations! Great to see you, and uh, we were looking forward to chatting. Obviously, Docker, Fanichary, Chen, and Greylock, and, and all those VCs. Um, exciting opportunity. Thanks, Solomon, for coming on the Cube. Founder, we actually have a founder in the house. It's always great to talk to founders of companies, uh, making it happen here. A lot of opportunity, uh, building out, growing, and, and commercializing open source technology is all the show rage here at the Red Hat Summit. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks.